All right, for this, uh, I'm gonna run you guys through a uh, gameplay feature I've had to work on recently for one of the games I'm working on. And uh, this was something we wanted to get working uh, as one of the gameplay features. And a lot of the questions I've also seen on forums and answer have been asked about this is the uh, characters switching. So what we're gonna set up is what you just saw there was the um, transitioning. So wherever you are with your characters, you can easily push a button and your cameras will transition between these guys. However, um, you did notice there that it will clip through the walls, but that's some other details and some other blueprinting that'll happen. But for this, I'm gonna run you through on getting a basic setup for um, these guys swapping cameras. Uh, so approaching this project for character swapping, originally we had to ask a, question, a couple questions was, all right, what did we need? We first off, for gameplay reasons, we needed to be able to change at any time while running around. Uh, we needed it not to be running in the background, such as um, such as event ticks happening and just bogging down memory as the gameplay goes. And we also needed it to be a smooth transition. Uh, that being like what you saw there, where it, it wasn't snapping between one character to the other. We want it to at least slide and transition between different characters to feel a little bit more natural and not as jolting in the gameplay. Uh, the limitations of this, like what were the rules that we laid down for ourselves when we wanted to write this was we are not using event ticks. I just covered that where it's not running in the background. It's only going to be called when it's needed and it's going to shut off whenever the, the movement's complete. Um, there's no floating components, so we're not going to be dealing with uh, we originally thought we would have had to deal with matinee cameras in the scene. We didn't want to do that because that falls into the next thing. We needed this to all be running at runtime, where as you're playing the game, at any time you could push your transition button and you'll transition to the other player or the other character. So it's not going to cut away from gameplay and it's not going to be feeling like it's not going to break the uh, immersion, I would say. And yes, dynamic transitions where you were seeing it dynamically flow between different characters. So this was the goal is that we had set up for what we did on proxy and I'll show you guys how we set that up, how you can get a real quick base going for uh, your characters. So in your launcher, you can start off with just any, you can start off with whatever project you want to do this in, but I'm mainly going to be showing it in a third person one since I, think that's the most relevant. Uh, we're going to start with a new project and I'm going to be doing this in Blueprint because I am not a coder um, at all. Uh, we have our third person template and we don't need any starter content. I'm just going to call this project uh, character switching. We'll create that project. And while that's starting up, um, we can kind of go over well, I mean, it should be loaded up in a minute here. I don't really need to speak over it. So, okay, so starting with starting with the basics here, where they give you just one character, you run around, jump, and the basic functionality is on the third person template. From here, we're gonna go into our. We're gonna stay with in our blueprints folder, and adding on to this guy here. So we notice that this guy is located by right clicking on him. I can go to finding content browser and I'll find him within that folder we're looking in right now and it'll highlight it for me. We're gonna build on top of this guy and we're also gonna be adding in uh, another guy with him. It's going to pretty much have a lot of the same code already done or a lot of the same blueprint already done on him as well. So let's look at the time. Uh, we're only four minutes in. All right, cool. So let's get going. So one of the first things I wanted to do was I needed to set up the um, interface for this character because I know that between between this, I needed to have this character talk to other characters and other uh, a pawn that we're going to use to swap between different characters. So. We can add our interface by going right clicking and going to blueprints and adding our, yeah, sorry, <laughs> probably looking right at it. I'm just not reading it. Blueprint interface, excuse me. 
and I'm just going to call this the action interface. And what this basically does is it kind of acts like a mailbox where you're telling the, the uh, characters or you're telling this uh, mailing system here, hey, anytime these letters come through this and they read that, we need to disperse it to anybody that can read these letters, name this. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit better as we go here. So let's rename our new function to uh, character swapping. Ah, oh, that's good enough. And we need to add a couple inputs. So what I do know is for our characters, they have a couple things that need to transition between them. They have a camera and they have a different name. And the easiest way to check those names is we're going to use a bool. So in our inputs, let's go with just our camera for now. So we can type in camera. And you'll see camera actor, but this is not the one we want. What we want is we want a camera component because that is the camera is a component of our character. It's not a floating camera like you would use in matinee. So I'm going to call this one. I name these, I'll name these things pretty straightforward. Compile that, and we should be good with the interface for now. I'm going to leave it open just so I can reference back to it. And from here, we also need to do another... Um, Let's add another character within our content browser. So now we actually have his partner crime that he's going to be running around with. But let's first rename this guy so we can get a, so we can have more distinctive uh, names between them. Uh, I'm going to call this guy the uh, primary, and I'm going to go ahead and let's just duplicate him for now. I'll call this guy the secondary. Okay, and the reason why I was saying we need to duplicate them now is because we're going to need to set up our, our uh, game state. Our game state is what's going to be storing these guys within this level here that we're working out of, or any game state the level uses, for the camera pawn to know, hey, where am I calling these guys from? So we'll go into our blueprints tab at the top, come down to our project settings, and in our game state, we are going to create our own unique game state. So let's go and create a new game state. I'm going to save this within my uh, blueprints folder here. I'm going to name this game state the uh, Arctic example map. Example map game state. All right. So there's not going to be anything in this game state that's normal. What we want to work in is within our event graph. So I'm going to get rid of these. Actually, I'm going to keep this event begin play because we will use that, but we will not be using event ticks. It's just my preference, but I tend to stay away from event ticks as much as I possibly can unless I absolutely have to use an event tick. Um, so one of the first things we need to do within our game state is we need to first start referencing our characters. So in our variables tab, we can add two new variables. Let's this first variable we'll call this our primary character. And just like it says, we're going to be referencing it to our primary character that we have in our content browser. Wow, I got to rename that. And we want this to be editable so we can actually use it within our other blueprints that we'll be making here in a minute. And also, we don't need it to be, my, excuse me, I don't need it to be that character. We don't want this node to reference the actual blueprint in the content browser. We need it to know that this is actually a pawn because pawns can be inherited. So we have a reference to that. Let's just duplicate this, and I'm going to call this one our secondary. Oh, I'm spelling it wrong again. All right, so let's go ahead and drag both of these out. I'm going to do two gets on both of these guys. Well, correction, let's do a set because we want to set these. We're n the only time this is ever going to fire is when the gameplay actually starts. So we need to set both of our characters up. And initially, we're going to be starting with our primary character. So when we play the, our game, we're going to be starting with just this guy here. 
And to get our other guy in there, we're going to actually have him spawn in the gameplay with us. So this would be like if you have a team of heroes that are working together and they always stick together in their gameplay. Uh, so first thing that needs to happen when event begin when the gameplay starts is we need to spawn at this. Uh, we need to spawn from class and the game spawn actor from class. So we don't have an actor in here. And what we need is we are going to need our secondary character to tell. We need this secondary character to spawn in the level with us. So we need to hook this spawn actor to being into set. And initially what will happen is when the gameplay starts, it will it'll, uh, make that character in our level a pawn so we can inherit it to be playable whenever we do character switching. And we'll set this guy up as well. And we're going to need to make that a pawn too. So we need to get a player pawn. And with this, we can drag that over to set and we need to have an initial set location for our um, character to be in the level. So with that said, let's go through and get actor location. What this does is it tells us, oh, whoever, it's like what character is the player playing, okay? From that, whoever he's playing at, where is his location? In this so what we want to do is we can break this vector I want to add a couple units away from the where our our player pawns gonna start because if we just did it exactly where the player starts he'd possibly spawn below or on top of our character and trying to inherit the same position so let's break this so instead of a um, XYZ we'll go ahead and let's add let's add 50 units to our Z Oops, that's equals. I won't get anything with that. And let's add a float. And let's just add our 50 units out. And we can go ahead and make this a vector. And from here, let's go and add these, the X and Y, the Y and Z, because we are not changing those values. And it'll translate it for us for our transform. So now if we jump into the gameplay, we should hopefully see, well, we will have to set up our initial play correctly first. So in project settings, come down to the game state and we're using our example ma game map state that we just got done making. We're starting off with our primary characters, which we want, and that's our player controller. So when we start, hopefully our guy will be next to us, and he is. So this guy is just an extra pawn floating around with us. So, all right, we're off on the right start for this. So let's take a look at the time here. All right, 13 minutes in. Um, so let's do one more initial setup. And I think from there, okay. So let's make one more blueprint and then I think we'll wrap this video up. So the next thing we need is we actually need the the actor that's going to be doing the transitioning for us and for the actor for the player character needs to inherit the actor because he's going to be flying through the air and then he's going to be moving into inherit to possess a different character and that's going to be a pawn because pawns can be inherited by players so we'll come to blueprints we'll go to blueprint class for new and we want a pawn just like it says a pawn is an actor that can be possessed and receive input from controllers what we need and let's call this one our character character swap pawn. All right, and I have a couple tabs open here, so we can close the interface down for now. We might need to reopen it later. Um, we don't need any class settings set up on our uh, blueprint, and for our initial setup on our character swap pawn the first thing we are going to want to use is go up to class settings and interfaces is going to be the most important thing because just remember like on interface we set up that one message node to be read we need this message node to actually be read across three different guys 
or whoever is going to be using this interface. So for the character swap pawn, let's first start. Let's first set him up with the interface, and we want to add our our action interface that we had made for notification that we're swapping our characters out. And we need to add a component for these for the um, character swap pawn, and we want that to be a camera. And let's make the camera the actual root of this, so that little. That won't, that little ball wouldn't be visible, but let's just make this the root anyways. All right, and I think for our components, we're good there. And let's get rid of these since we don't need these and we are not going to be using an event tick for this. We're going to set up an internal clock system for our uh, camera swapper. And uh, let's go into our primary and secondary characters. Let's also add in those interfaces too. Just like the camera swapper, we have our action interface added to that. And just like we have for the primary, we need it for our secondary character as well. Let's go into his class settings and we can action interface that. Now, I'm not 100% sure, I didn't have a chance to test this out yet, but your other character can possibly be a child. It will inherit almost the same controls, but we might ha you'd have to probably expose a uh, a bool to enable characters to flip back and forth the way I'm setting this up. There's different ways you can go about setting it up. So for now let's go ahead and I'll stop the video here and the next video we're gonna go ahead and start setting up all of the nitty-gritty blueprints that'll get these that'll get the cameras talking to each other and moving around.